Okay, so I'm back here at Righteous Guitars. So last week when I posted the vlog with Noah, we were here looking for an amp for him and he went with the Dr. Z Cure, but I got a lot of comments on that video asking about their Plex machine. So I thought it might make an interesting video to come here and check it out, watch them Plex a guitar, because I've actually never seen it done before. I want to know how it works. And uh, I thought I'd bring you guys along with me, so. So uh, I got a haircut today, and Ben got a haircut too. Yes. He's trying to match me. Do you have a guitar ready to go? Mm, maybe. I told him I want to see the whole process, the whole thing. So it's essentially like a, like a CNC. It is a CNC. Yeah, it's a CNC that's specialized for guitars. So we just cut a nut on this guitar. And we weren't gonna pluck it, but we can, so why not? So, okay, explain- Hi, JJ, this is your guitar, we're gonna pluck it. <laughs> <laughs> explain what this thing does. What makes the pluck special, it's not magic, you don't just hit enter and it does everything perfect. It's not at all like it. It's just a tool with very high visibility. So if you take uh, any guitar from the start of it, and you build it, right, you've got it, so you build your neck, put a fretboard on it, you're going to level out that fingerboard, right? You'll put a radius on it, whatever you do, but you want it to be level. Then you're going to lay frets into it. Once that's done, you'll take a, a leveling file. You know, some people use something like this. Once the neck's straight, we're going to go over and level all these frets so they're on the same plane so that the guitar will not buzz. It'll play great. Once that's done, we'll take a crowning file, which my crowning file's out there. But we'll go back over the tops of the frets to get, you know, they're going to be flat. Right. So we're going to go back over the top to put the crown back on and make them round. And when that's done, we'll polish it all out and you've got a guitar that is ready to have 177 pounds of tension put on it with strings, in which case the neck may move and now your work may or may not be accurate any longer. Okay. So what makes the Plex special, if we were to start at the same exact place and we built the neck, we leveled the fingerboard out, we put the frets in, right? When we would go to level and crown the frets, instead of doing it with no tension, we would actually tune the guitar out just like this, put it in the pluck machine, then it's actually going to take and scan underneath each string and look at the fingerboard and the frets under tension, with, okay. with tension on, on it. So it'll look underneath each string. And what that will give us is a really clear picture of what the fingerboard and the frets are doing under tension. So, for example, if you have an older Gibson or something, you know, a lot of times they're known to have kind of a hump down here. They may have a twist in it. Because of sc scanning under every string, we can actually see a twist. We can see where the humps are. We can see irregularities. We can see a single high fret out of the whole mix. Um, and what's really cool about it is it's accurate to a thousandth of a millimeter. So we're looking on a really small scale to be very precise. So once we look at that, which you'll see in a minute, uh, once we get through that and look at what we're actually playing with, we can then do a uh, basically a virtual fret dress um, and that we will go through the program and tell it exactly where we would want it to be based off of the setup we would want to do to that guitar and string gauge and anything else. Uh, once we've done that, take the strings off, loosen them, put it back in the machine, it'll scan again. So now see how the neck acts without any tension on it, right? Sure. Okay, so by subtraction it knows what to do to this neck with no tension in order to make it perfect with tension. Oh. Right. So then you have wow. this blade right here. And this blade will actually level and crown the fret. So it's going to cut, but it's, it's a circular blade, so it's actually going to cut the crown into the fret. It's going to do multiple passes. So when it's done uh, cutting, then it'll come back through, we'll restring it, scan it again. It'll go, okay, I did what I was supposed to do. It's now within spec to what you were trying to accomplish. And at that point, it goes out to the floor and gets hand finished out. So we'll polish out the foot frets, buff it, set it up, so forth, so on. So that's that in a nutshell that's how the plaque works so this is the uh the victim today it's yes like gold top telly essentially yeah p90 it's a gold top telly uh belongs to a buddy of mine and uh the checking on this guitar kind of just a fun side story it wasn't checked but he was playing i believe in the middle east and they were on a tarmac waiting to get on a plane and it was left out in the sun for a while and that's actually natural checking <laughs> <laughs> so Nice. It turned out cool, but yeah, it's a neat guitar. It's a cool back. It is. All right. So, we'll so do essentially, it. it's using uh, science to do a perfect fret job. Way better than any human could do, I'm assuming. 
Yeah, well, what's cool about it, because of the visibility it gives us, it can prevent us from doing work when we don't need to do work. So if you don't want to take front wire off, you, you don't want to take front wire off, you don't have to. Gotcha. Sometimes you may think you need to and you don't, right? Okay. So it can prevent us from, from doing something like that. It also, unlike a human, it's taking off such small amounts that where, if I'm doing this by hand, there's just no way that I can't unintentionally take off more than I need to. The tell for me when I became a Plek fan, because I was a skeptic, um, I, have a, I have an old Strat, you've played it actually, yep. my old yep. Strat. That Strat I had plucked a few years ago, um, and when I got it back I could play, but I could play that D up there and it, stayed, it sounded in tune, which right. <laughs> never had, ever. And there wasn't anything different about the guitar other than the front work, so wow. it's just a more precise way of doing it. Everything's still finished by hand, uh, everything, every decision is still made by the operator, so just because you have a pluck doesn't mean you're going to have a great result from it. You have to think, like, if you can't do it without a pluck, you can't do it with, with a pluck. That makes so, sense. Yeah. And I'll show you that. It's going to give us some options to decide what to do. Okay. Um, and we can make the wrong choice if we wanted to. Um, but we're not well, let's to, not do that because I don't want to screw this dude's guitar up. But. Oh, no. No. He'd be very unhappy with Well, me. yeah, and because this is going to be on the internet, so he's going yes. to know he did it. All right, so guitar's in the rack. Guitar's ready to go. All you do is strap it in. That's all you got to do, right? Strapped it, well, I'll put in a ton of information over here so it knows a lot about this guitar. So we give it as much info as we can up front okay. to ensure that it knows what it's working with. Um, then we'll close it up. Now it's going to orient itself first, make sure that it kind of knows where things are at. Now that it's determined that it is what we told it it is. Whoa. It's going to measure the whole scale. That's crazy. Now it's gonna jump down and find where the bridge, where each string travels over the bridge, because if it knows where that's at and it knows where it is at the nut, the string makes a straight line and knows the whole course of the string. Wow. So mechanically probe for each string. Okay, and it stops when it... It'll find the string and then roll off the other side so it also knows the gauge of the string. <laughs> that's so nuts, dude. Which we've told it what gauge it has, but... It's just it's, verifying. It verifies over and over. Throughout a flack, there'll be multiple scans to make sure that it's catching everything. So when we're done, we'll have a whole history of what was done to this guitar. So it may tell us it's fine, it just needs an adjustment to be a little better. And so that'll, once it's done, that'll pop up yeah, it'll there and it'll tell you. It'll bring up a screen over there and we'll walk through it. That, that part of it can be really confusing and misleading if you don't know what you're looking at, which is why we don't offer a, like a, a printout version of this because if someone doesn't walk you through it, people get some crazy ideas of what they're looking at. So gotcha. you'll understand it completely in a minute. And you're like, oh, okay, makes sense. Okay, so what we're looking at here, this is what the data we get back. So think if, the, if, if we look like this, okay? See these little, little nubs? All right. Those are your frets, okay? So think of this as your first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth, fifth, so forth, all the way to the end of the 21st fret, right? Sure. That's what you're looking at, and this is underneath the G string. So if you were holding the guitar sideways, that's what you'd be seeing. Those are the frets popping up. Gotcha. So you can see we're looking at a pretty magnified view right. of what's going on. All right, this gray area down here is the actual fingerboard. So you can see there's actually a little little hump right here. Yeah. Uh, that may tell us something else in a minute. We'll find out. Uh, this is the bridge. This is the nut. The orange line is the reality. That's where the string really is. Okay. The green line is where we want it to be. That's ideal for the setup that we told it we wanted on this guitar. And inside of this yellow area is tolerable. It's within tolerance. Once it hits down here, then we're going to see the green line is the plane of the frets that we want it to have in order to be perfect. And keep in mind, if you're looking at this as a player, it looks straight. It's not, yeah. it's a very, it's very little exaggerated. Relief. Yeah. yeah. Um, the orange line is the reality. So we can see right here that it looks like we possibly the neck's a little too straight. We'd want to add a little relief and maybe it'll fall right in line. It'll be good. All right, so the nut slot we can see is too high on the G string. Okay. Right, we want it down here. So let's uh, scroll through. Here's where it gets fun. This is the low E string. Let's see that high, right. high action, high nut slot. See that hump again right there, right? Yep. Okay, let's go to A. Hey, there's that hump again. D, there it is again. G, B, and high E. 
What that tells me is that we are going to loosen the truss rod a little bit and that's going to allow this to fall in line and it may be great. This might be a good example of how a guitar could be perfect and this is just showing us that the setup could have been better. Right. So I'll hit the truss rod adjustment here and then for reference let's just see what we got because I suspect that... Hear it? Yep. What we'll do is uh, loosen the truss rod up a little bit and we'll scan again which won't take near as long. All right, so just tweak the truss rod, put it back in. And it'll, it'll do a quick scan. This is a much faster scan since it knows where the thing is now. So that's after the adjustment. adjustment. Just a truss rod adjustment. So look what the neck has done. If you notice, you can't see the orange line anymore. Yep. All right, so that means it's right behind that green line, which means it's literally perfect. But look right here now, that little hump. A lot less prevalent. Mm-hmm, a lot less. That's on that low E. Let's go to A, still there a little bit. D, G, B, E. A wow. tell right here, if you look, notice how, watch that orange line go like this as I scroll across. See it going Yeah, on? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got a little twist in it. So now that we see that, I think that we're not gonna get better than that. We could try, but let's go look at, at the other screen and see if we really have any things to worry about. We've got some stuff to worry about up top. So we do have some areas up here that you potentially could have some buzz. Um, you can see it right there. See how it kicks up? Yeah. The area down here, when you typically will, you'll taper it off a little bit, it's called fall away to help with uh, several different issues. But it's, it's, it's something that you should have. But starting around the D, he's starting to get some issues down here. So what we could do is try to adjust this one more time, which I will, because I want to see what the neck does. Yeah. Um, but it's likely we'll, we'll pluck it, even though I wouldn't normally pluck this guitar because it's pretty good. Uh, we'll do it just so you can see the process and to make it perfect for JJ. He'll love it. All right. That's better. So that's the second adjustment. Third. Third adjustment. Yeah. It is better. Um, this is your high E. Okay, now watch that twist. There it is. See it? Yeah. Let's scroll through. But look how small it is. We're at a point now where all we have to really deal with is up here, and that may or may not matter. We'll check it out first. But So, the way that this works, we have that green line and that orange line, right, mm -hmm. that we looked at? So the orange line is the reality of the frets. So what we'll do is we'll actually play with it a bit, and we're going to try to minimize the amount of fret wire that we need to take off. It, so this is literally the profile of the frets, like the kind of the cross sections. That's that's the fingerboard or the radius of the of the fret wire. Sure. Right. That's pretty much it. Now we'll uh, let it do its thing. So we're not actually going to take the strings off. We're just going to oh, get them out of the way. Yeah. So now we'll secure this bad boy in here. Now while I'm doing this, think about what's happening. When I'm putting tension right here, I'm about to put tension right here, I've got that. The neck's gonna be like, right. kinda wacky. It's gonna see that, and it's gonna know, again by subtraction, what to do to the guitar neck, like this, in order for it to be perfect when we get it back under you know, regular circumstances. Sure. Pretty brilliant. All right, let's uh, close it up. Yeah, looks good. Okay, it's gonna scan again. So I can see how the fingerboard looks now, which is drastically different. Right. And then it's going to do some, some math, and it's going to cut it to be perfect. Yeah, you know, I will say that, like, I had, I was slightly skeptical of the Plec, just because mm -hmm. I've, I guess, kind of been misinformed about it, and, like, what it does, you know. Yeah. Putting my Novo into this machine is kind of intimidating, but now after seeing how it works, and the redundancy, and the fail safes and everything that are in place, like, I might bring the J by. You should. You should. Sounds like you need it, actually. Uh, yeah, I probably do. <laughs> or a refret. Yeah, well, I was telling Ben earlier, I have the touch of a blacksmith when I play, and so I've had that guitar for a year, and I've already worn through some of the some of the frets, so it might need a, a plec. Oh, uh, yeah, I see the blade spinning. Wow. So it'll do a quick pass, and then if it does a second or third pass, it'll go much slower on the second or third pass. Right. Or on the last pass, I should say. Yeah, Scott's actually our main pluck operator, so he spends a lot of time with this machine. Yeah. So if you bring a guitar in, it's likely that Scott's going to be doing it. This is his, uh, this 
his wheelhouse. He loves it. He's excellent at it. All right, so just finished the first pass. This will be a final cut too. Really slow. Just ensuring a nice clean cut. Right. And so it only does that on the frets that like absolutely need it. Is that the idea? No, if it, if it does one pass on a fret, it'll go really slow the first time. If it does multiple passes, it'll go slowest on the last time in gotcha. order to get a cleaner cut. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, it, it only hits the frets. Everything that it's doing is based off what I told it to do. Right. So, you know, if you had one high fret, in theory, we should be able just to hit the high fret. Although that's never the case, but right. it could be. Can we say it's officially been plucked now, or is it we still got one more step? It's, it's been plucked. We've got two more steps. Two more steps. Well, three, maybe. But um, the frets have now been cut. If you look close there, I mean, they look yeah, clean. They look clean. Yeah, they look really clean. Now we're going to tune it back up. It knows it's achieved its process, but we're going to tune it back up so that we can uh, so we can let it measure under tension and make sure that it's still awesome. Just another level of redundancy. So now it's telling us after that scan that it achieved what it was trying to achieve. It wants us to set the guitar up and then we'll put it back in here for a final scan. We started, we popped it in, we did a scan, and we had some, some kind of funky stuff going on. Um, again, this is the that twist showing up. So that was the first scan. We adjusted the truss rod. It got better, like a lot better. Still had some funky stuff, but it got a lot better. We adjusted it another time just to try to get as close as we could, and that's really outstanding. Yeah. This scan will be, you can see the neck's all over the place. So it's, oh, wow. That's with no tension. So when it measured that, it knew to take this and the last scan you know, by subtraction. Right. That's the work it's going to be in. And then when we're finally done with it, this is the guitar now, if we just scanned it. So um, starting on the low E, you can see the orange line, you can not even see it. It's yeah. invisible. So there's A, D, G, B, E. Wow. So now this guitar literally has a f perfect level and crown job on it. So once we go set the guitar up, it will be as good as it possibly can be. So, and that's what the Plek does. So it's not magic. It doesn't do anything, you know, hit a button and your guitar pops out awesome. There's a lot of room for error. You have to think. But if you do, then you can come out with, with a really really well done guitar. So it's really super dependent on the operator. It's not it's not the machine that does everything. You have to know what you're doing and have to know how to set up a guitar to do it yeah. properly. Yeah, it, if it's just a machine, it's just a tool. So if you think about it from the perspective of maybe the best description of it would be, and I've heard Joe say this, that it's the steadiest set of hands you could have and the most powerful set of eyes you could have. So as long as you know what you're doing, then you can have an outstanding result, but it doesn't do anything on its own. So you have to be able to tell it what to do, and you have to be able to think. You know, like on this guitar, it's got an issue right here. I don't really know anybody that's going to play right there. Yeah. Why would I address that issue if it's not affecting the rest of the fingerboard? Why take fret wire away somewhere else to address something you can't really use anyway? Yeah. It's a tool. Yeah. It's all it is. It's a great tool, very powerful tool. Uh, every guitar over two thousand dollars we sell will scan the guitar to see if it has any issues. If it does, we address them so that it can be as good as it possibly can be. If it doesn't, that's cool. We still have a record of the guitar. You know, it's hard to be perfect when you're shipping a guitar across the country. Yeah. But if we ship a guitar to somebody across the country and something's not right, we know exactly where it was when it left. So hopefully we can aid them in getting it back to perfect. Sure. You know, it's usually a matter of if there is an issue, it's usually a small adjustment to the truss rod that we can walk somebody through if we needed to. You know, we want to have everything be as good as it can be, as perfect as it can be. So for us, the opportunity to make a guitar literally as good as it can be is great. You know, that's how I would want to be treated. And so if you buy a guitar from us, you know, that's, that's the kind of service you'll get. Yes. So that was one thing I got a lot of comments on from the video last week with Noah. Yeah. Was people were commenting on the customer service here at Righteous. And I got to tell you, man, you guys... They really kill it here. So Thank I'll you. be bringing one of probably several of my guitars in to get plucked pretty Come soon. On. Now that I've seen it work, it's freaking awesome. How much do you guys charge for a pluck? Uh, currently it's 225 for a pluck. Now, if you bring your guitar in and we put it in the machine and scan it and determine, hey, your guitar doesn't need a pluck. 
and your guitar just needed some adjustments, which is a great thing. That's yeah. a good feeling. You don't actually have to do anything. It's thirty-five dollars for a scan. Um, so, yeah, two twenty-five if it actually needs it. But if it doesn't, it's thirty-five bucks, and you can get a setup or whatever else it may need. Sweet. Nice, man.